Hello everyone. Thank you for joining me today. For those of you who don't know, Sri Lanka has declared a 36-hour na nationwide curfew from Saturday to Monday. Uh, it was amid a series of protests over the economic crisis that's going on in the country right now. Uh, this development came a day after Sri Lankan president imposed a state of emergency. Uh, for weeks, um, Sri Lanka has been battling with shortage of food, fuel, gas, medicine, and everything. Um, and it has sort of sent the cost of basic goods skyrocketing. Last month, the government floated the Sri Lankan rupee, effectively devaluing it by causing the currency to plunge against the US dollar. The president has deployed troops who now possess special power under the state of emergency to put a stop to protest. Authorities can now basically detain anybody who they think is causing trouble. During this curfew, Sri Lankans are not allowed to step out of the home except for essential services. But I don't understand what essential services they're going to buy because nothing is available. Sri Lanka is a country of 22 million people and it is mired in debt. On March 17th, India has signed a 1 billion line of credit to help Sri Lanka. Uh, India has also sent a consignment of about 40,000 metric tons of diesel to Colombo. Um, authorities have also imposed a 13-hour daily power cut from Thursday due to the shortage of fuel. Um, and they are not able to operate the power plant. Several state and hospitals have stopped conducting surgeries. The government has also indefinitely postponed school examinations for class 9, 10 and 11 because it does not have stacks on which it could print question papers. As of today, Sri Lanka has blocked access to many social media platforms in an attempt to prevent further protests, blaming the government for the worsening economic crisis. Users in most part of Sri Lanka were unable to access social media sites like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, WhatsApp, and other platforms. I spoke with Tulasi Mutalingam, who is a journalist and women's rights activist living in Jaffna to get an on-ground update from her. We had to struggle to do this interview with a lot of back and forth because of the uncertainty with regards to the power cut but we managed to squeeze in a quick chat. Tulsi, thank you for joining me. What's going on um, at the moment in your country? So President Gotabaya Rajapaksha has uh, declared a state of emergency. And uh, a few hours ago, he suddenly declared a curfew, which is operational until Monday morning. Um, that was primarily because people were taking to the streets to protest and a mass island-wide protest was uh, planned for tomorrow. And uh, so this was basically just to keep the people quiet. He has already arrested people who have uh, protested uh, yesterday outside his home. Uh, sorry, day before yesterday night outside his home. Um, there are already reports of their being tortured in the police station. Um, they abducted a young uh, Facebook admin of a, a Facebook page called the Go Home Gota. And they, uh, so this is very commonly known to us. The police suddenly come and abduct you. And uh, then they denied when uh, the activist put out the news that he had been uh, taken away, uh, the police station that had taken him away denied that uh, they had done so. So we are very familiar with this as the minority communities here. The, the, the police and the army, we know, so we can't say you can't because under the Prevention of Terrorism Act, they have the right to do that. They can come and take you away. And then they'll deny they did it. So then no matter who, how much you scream, these are the people who took them away, uh, the government is not answerable. And uh, so we really, I was really scared in the morning when I heard this young man had disappeared, but uh, he is from the Sinhalese community and fortunately the lawyers have managed to track him down in the police station. The police initially denied they had him and now they have admitted they have him. So hopefully his life will be saved. Now, obviously the people took to the streets because they were frustrated with the inaction of uh, the president. If you can talk a little bit about the um, pre pre-curfew situation as to what led up to this moment? So economic policies were really, really bad. So they initially blamed it on COVID, but they were going to crash anyway without COVID. Uh, the corruption was just off the charts. And people over time, due to war, due to this uh, culture of uh, uh, kidnapping and killing uh, dissenters, people in Sri Lanka are not a, by and large a protesting lot. It's a very much mind our own business kind of culture. So they didn't hold the government accountable on anything. It's like we'll keep our heads down and somehow survive because inflation is continuously rising. It was rising even before COVID, but after COVID it's like off the charts. Everybody was just very, very busy putting food on the table. They didn't, they didn't hold the government accountable on anything. And we didn't realize how badly they were running it. We knew they were corrupt. But this much of corruption, they, are, like, they knew we were going to hit, hit a ground like this, but absolutely no planning. 
and uh, so finally when it finally uh, reached this stage no fuel um, uh, 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 limited food long queues for uh, uh, food huge prices so like you know i really don't know how the grassroots people are surviving even the middle class went from three meals to two meals to one meal so it's just seriously absurd so now um, gas ran out so then we switched to kerosene and then kerosene ran out um, in jaffna people still managed to uh, survive on firewood because in rural home, homes they have that capacity although i don't um, in colombo you can't apartment buildings you can't really uh, put firewood in, in and so it's it's uh, it just keeps going bad worse and worse and worse and people put up with it until they hit these power cuts to this extent even then four hour power cuts they didn't complain six hour power cuts they didn't complain it has been building and finally two days ago it's 13 hour power cuts for the benefit of those that are watching tulsi and i had to really coordinate um with uh, the power cut situation right now and just five minutes ago she texted me saying the power is back and we quickly jumped into the zoom call that's how situation uh, is dire right now but tulsi clearly this position right now like you're saying hasn't happened overnight this has happened over years of uh, a lot of uh, misjudgment uh, terrible uh, mismanagement and ex- excessive borrowing and what what are yes. your thoughts on that so the corruption again uh, like i said they could have planned ahead like i was talking to economics recently like they said they were advising the government look you are running out of foreign reserves stop importing stupid things like cheese and chocolate right now they don't they are not importing even the valuable medicines we need and they have stopped surgeries in the hospitals but right up till 2 months ago they were importing chocolates and uh, biscuits and all sorts of things that are not essential items so it absolutely no plan and even this fuel situation of uh, we have several years of local scientists keeping on telling the government there are you know a, a, a eco friendly alternatives because sri lanka is a seriously hot country we can a, a, a get equipped with solar power we already have two hydro power plants which is why we are surviving in on these two or three hours at least and uh, but it's right right now drought season we are waiting for two three months more when the rainy season comes i mean this kind of planning where they could have easily switched a long long time ago but because of corruption because they were getting kickbacks from the petrol fuel whatever from abroad they just kept selling out the country and now that it has hit this i mean and this writing was on the wall 2 years ago they could have planned but no it's it's even now right now in front of us the we call them the royal family they are living it up they are you know entertaining themselves putting out pictures a bidding on paintings for 3 35 million rupees and it's like what are you doing when the people are like this it's like so out of touch with reality it's like a culture of complete impunity and it's uh, this level of insanity even i am finding it hard to believe you are somebody who has been through quite a lot based on uh, sri lankan history within the civil war within the um, community sectarian violence and all of that you've seen and you've reported and you've traveled extensively uh, talking about situation like this and yet this feels like uh, a very sort of a helpless situation because despite so many warnings it seems as if uh, the president has completely neglected the welfare of the people and there is no amount of safeguarding whatsoever now about um, aids that are coming in um, Uh, i i read that india has sent a little bit of fuel and extended a little bit of aid china has sent a little bit of aid but then i wonder this is this is an intergovernment thing and when it comes down to the very last person that is in a 22 million population country how much do you think will it get implemented because after all let's face it we are talking about a situation like this because of corruption now yes, what are the odds of uh, us Uh, sending aids to a country uh, that is in dire need right now and mm-hmm. hoping that it will actually translate to welfare towards the people towards the population yeah so india gave a lot of money that's why we hit, we hit the ground at actually 3 4 months ago and then because india and china alternated with loans we just kept going through and even then people are saying okay at some point this is going to hit the ground what then like i don't know we we couldn't face it because I, i we are all running from pillar to post now i am doing three or four different jobs to survive everyone is like that one job is not enough anymore so we don't have time to think about all this and now the alternative is everyone is running out of the country as fast as they can if they can 
right? So it's it's just insane. And anyway, in India did give money. It recently did give fuel. Um, they have also give, uh, said that they will open up a credit line where they will deliver goods, not money, because they probably figured out this is this corruption. But you know, one of the first things the Sri Lankan government ordered with that credit line is 700 jeeps at a time when you don't have fuel to run. Exactly what do you need those 700 jeeps for? And what are you doing it for? The people are starving. Why do you need 700 jeeps? And right and, now, uh, with the army getting involved along with the police, it seems like uh, if there is an emergency, the army has complete freedom to, you know, curtail mm -hmm. movement, um, prevent people from protesting. You can, already, you can already see videos of it, the police and the army manhandling people. And the people talking to them like, you know, you are our brothers, what are you doing? These are your families too. So, but this, this the, again, the Prevention of Terrorism Act has always given arbitrary powers to them. And we have always protested against this, but they didn't listen. And now for the first time, well, I wouldn't say it's for the first time, but the majority community is actually waking up to what kind of harm this can do. Because it, mostly it was the Tamils and the Muslims keeping on saying this is very harmful, this is very harmful. But we were ignored. And now, uh, because people are out on the road protesting, did the president make any public um, statement or sort of uh, comfort the people of Sri Lanka to, you know, reassure them in any way? Not that I'm aware of, but I'm, I don't watch the mainstream news. But that's the problem with the mainstream news. It's like uh, most of them ignore that this is happening. One or two channels were actually showing the protest and those journalists were getting manhandled by the army and the police or on the, at the protest site. But most media channels are in the hands of um, the Raj, Raja Paksha frontliners. And I know this as a media person. So there was a once a policy of just killing as many journalists as you could. But that wasn't really working because there were a lot of brave journalists who kept on coming up to take the place of the old dead journalists. So at one point, he just started putting out uh, henchmen to buy up all the media companies. And in that way, even if the journalist wrote an anti-government uh, uh, article, it was never going to get to the press. So they basically own most of the media out there and the media is not going to really uh, cover this uh, news. So, and I don't know whether he made a, a statement or not, but as far as I know, not. I know Nama Rajapaksha is active on Twitter and he keeps saying, I apologize, I am sorry, we are working. And uh, people are so furious, like this is ridiculous. About the situation at hand right now, like most economic crisis, obviously when a country is hit by it, everybody is affected. But I want to talk to you about how it particularly affects the female population of a country. If you have any insight on what do you think could happen to the female population of the country and if you can share that with us. Um, so women actually are the main breadwinners across many of the sectors, right? The, uh, Sri Lanka is not uh, dependent only on tourism. They are dependent mainly also on garments, tea, uh, what's the other one, migrant labor. All of these are women-led. And across all these industries, women are horrendously exploited. They ask for very basic pay. They ask for very basic uh, working standards. None of that is afforded them. Like the government lives off them. We all live off them. But there is very little uh, uh, proactivity, actually no proactivity about making their lives better. You know, so those industries are just completely ignored. And again, the women uh, being the breadwinners and also at home, they do most of the bulk of the work. Uh, most of the men are just addicted to drugs, drink. Uh, that's a substantial problem in Sri Lanka across all communities. Right now, when the curfew was announced, all the liquor shops uh, had huge queues, all the men lining up to get their stocks. And you, you can predict this when they drink and stay at home. Like uh, you, you could see it uh, during COVID time, like the amount of cases that went into accidents, uh, they, like the women rush, getting rushed to accident departments. Um, but again, no uh, insight, no, uh, nothing afforded and not, not doesn't get out much in the media. Like women are not even really accounted for or talked about. It's, it's just, just under the surface, no one cares about it. Yeah, I mean, obviously everybody in the country is uh, extremely upset and worried about uh, what's going to happen. But if there is a way in which we can talk about or look forward to some sort of a future that looks slightly better than it is now, what is it that we can aim for? And what is it that people that are listening can do 
other than just create awareness to talk about it and have uh, you know stakeholders of their respective countries to look into it in more detail um i think the the rot runs deep we have let it run too deep into our systems so it's like all across the government departments our universities our government employees our ministers it's like so corrupt people have sort of given up and try to work on their own outside that system and how that is going to change because this took a long term to develop and it's going to take an equally long time to readdress you can't do it overnight and this is the problem we don't have a good alternative if we send this guy home it's not like the opposition party is any better they cover for each other every time that's why he was voted in because the last government was so bad that like the rajapakshas were so bad the 2015 government changed and again at when maitri pala sirisena came people were very particular about it we are not voting for maitri we are voting against rajapaksha and then he was so hopeless 2019 they voted rajapaksha and now this is down the drain so then they'll go back to the opposition party who are just there each time they all have huge corruptions and they cover for each other none of them go to jail right so even the opposition party covers for this government in power and this government covers for the opposition power every time a minister's huge uh, excess comes out they just cover for each other nobody ever answers for it so how do we readdress this uh, it's i don't know i don't know what the answer is because uh, to go into politics to address this to have the space to do that because we do have youths we do have women who want to get into politics but these people are so entrenched in the system they want to allow you so how do you get into politics how do you get to that level how do you get to parliament how do you change the system just recently um due to some influx of uh, tourism and everything and uh, of course the remittance inward remittance of uh, sri lankans living abroad that sort of brought in a bit more stability to the economy yes. but with yes. covid and everything all of that got punctured out entirely i uh, can't even imagine the horrors of uh, women and children or families living uh, you know with bare minimum to survive i i don't suppose uh, there are steps being taken to look into this in uh, you know particular detail to sort of address the people belonging to the poverty line or below the poverty line government gave them a small stipend per month but that was like i think the cost of living now it's easily more than 50 60000 bare minimum for just your food they were giving 5000 per month for, per family so it's just a drop in the bucket it's not going to yeah and and if uh, people are going to use their uh, fundamental freedom to protest and demand for their fundamental rights and if that is going to be uh, responded with some sort of a curfew or an emergency declaration then that isn't particularly a democratic government is it this is just a pretend set a democracy we already knew or knew that he he is a dictator um i expected white ones to start running as soon as he came back because that's how he dealt with it in the last regime um or his brother did and he was supporting the current president was the brother of the former president mahinda rajapaksha and both of them they were running white vans they were picking up dissenters and uh, they were just disappearing and uh, people didn't dare question that in that time so when these guys came back i fully expected okay white vans are going to start running again but i suppose in the meantime so much pressure had been put on the inter- international community and human rights the jenwa all that to look into it they sort of uh, they didn't run the white vans as far as i know it was a ramp up um but people always knew you couldn't really take to the streets and protest they just got on with their lives and uh, so this is the first time they have to so it took a lot to push them this far to get on the streets and they are learning for the first time it's not yeah it's not allowed realistically speaking what can people do i mean we are individual people we are not the government we are not powerful people we are not policy makers we are not stakeholders of uh, you know um, big industries of the society but as an individual if there is anything that we can do what that would be what would that be i'm not sure at all but i'm really grateful that several tourists because i was on reddit sri lanka some uh, two days ago and i noticed quite a few tourists are saying they want to come here just to contribute the dollars um and a few sri lankans are saying you better be careful because again hotels here don't have many of the hotels are running on generators and even to run on generators they need the diesel they don't have it so even the tourists have to put up with power cuts extended power cuts um and these protests uh, and things going on suddenly with can claim into violence 
and it's not the people flaming into violence it's just that these people are planting their goons in there and suddenly touching up things and it can get violent so i noticed sri lankan saying uh, telling the tourists you better be careful when you come here because this is a very dangerous situation as much as you want your dollars you might get into trouble so that's how bad the situation is and i have no idea what to do about it yeah. but i suppose in a way that that uh, that uh, activist researchers today after the police denied that they had him at all once there was this culture of impurity they would, where they would just say we don't know deal with it but now they seem to have some kind of fear of the international community looking in and keeping tabs so i suppose in that way holding them accountable might help so my guess is uh, for individuals that are watching for them to you know just make other people aware that such a crisis is going on especially when there is an ongoing um, infiltration going on between russia and ukraine which in a way has also caused quite a bit of rift in your country because of you know how your dependency on oil in those countries and now that they have gone to war things have gotten out of hand for you um we don't realize how uh, it's like that butterfly effect really um, mm. several asian yeah. countries and african countries are suffering because of the war that's happening in a country that's so far away from them that's just how things are uh perhaps we can monitor the situation and see how things are going perhaps you and i could have a conversation again see if things have improved and if people can help we can find a way to do that as a community just as individuals as all of us together uh and see how things go yeah. for most people this information would seem totally new it is true even in my country a lot of indians have no idea about the crisis on neighboring countries and so things can't be any different when we go further away from the problem point for those of you interested in helping women in sri lanka i have included some link uh, in the description um that have been vetted by activists from there if you're able to help with whatever little you can please do so things are not looking good for them and i call upon women all over the world to help our sri lankan sisters